In the startup and small business world, there is a never-ending debate about whether it's a good idea or a bad idea to found a company with your friends or family members. Having watched companies fail and thrive, and having experienced both the problems and benefits of founding with a friend or family member, it seems to me that just like almost everything else, the answer to whether it's a good idea or a bad idea to found with those close to you is, it depends. With that said, here are my tips for determining if you should found with a particular friend or family member and how to make sure that you're successful if you do. When deciding if your best friend or your brother is a good co-founder, there are four main things that you need to consider. Firstly, do you have complementary skills and complementary personalities? A lot of times, founders come together because they're so similar and they agree on everything, so they think that they'll be great as business partners too, but this is absolutely not correct. When you're starting out and are just an army of two, you need to make sure that you complement each other. Two big picture thinkers with nobody to handle the details will be a disaster, just as two detail-obsessed founders will completely miss the important strategic and long-term planning that needs to get done. Similarly, a group of friends that all know each other because they worked on their computer science degrees together probably needs to bring someone into the mix who has a business background. Secondly, do you share the same level of passion for the business and commitment to its success? Businesses become babies to their founders, and emotions will run high when stress builds as you start up or when tough times hit. You need to have a co-founder who's equally as committed to the success of the company as you are, or there will be a lot of resentment when one partner starts slacking during the labor-intensive startup phase or is too quick to jump ship when the going gets tough. Countless relationships have been ruined because of this, so make sure that any co-founder that you go into business with shares your passion. Thirdly. Are you able to be brutally honest and completely blunt with one another? Starting a business is about brutal honesty, critiquing products, services, and marketing plans, and tearing apart strategies to make sure that you've covered all of your bases. If anyone's too sensitive to criticism or too afraid to share their opinions because they don't want to hurt the other's feelings, you're headed for failure. You need to be able to communicate honestly and effectively with each other, even if what you need to communicate isn't always praise. Finally, do you know how the other person handles stress and how they fight? Similarly to being able to be blunt, you need to be able to fight with each other. Emotions run high in startups. You're not always going to agree with each other and you need to be able to have a fight, find a resolution, and then get over it and get back to work quickly. If your relationship is currently based on avoiding conflict and you haven't had a few knock down, drag out fights and then recovered from them, you may not want to go into business together. At the same time, it's helpful to know each other's personalities so that you can avoid unnecessary fights by recognizing that your co-founder's in a mood before something blows up and walking away and just coming back an hour later. If, after thinking hard about all of these elements of a good partnership, you still want to work with your friend or family member, be sure to get everything in writing from the beginning. So many entrepreneurs who go into business with those close to them are way too comfortable with just a handshake. Whether your new business partner is a complete stranger or your own mother, you have to draft and sign shareholder agreements that everyone is comfortable with, clearly define roles and responsibilities, and make sure that everyone is on the same page about what decisions can be made unilaterally and what will require some discussion. Sit down, talk it out, get it in writing, and get it signed before you start working, or you will almost certainly have an issue in the future that becomes a thousand times bigger than it should be. I hope these tips were helpful. Remember to follow me on Twitter and subscribe to this channel for more tips, tricks, and tutorials to help your small business grow, as well as the latest entrepreneurship news. Mm -hmm.